My name's John Cleary. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you here this afternoon. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we stand. Affinity was formed by a group of young Muslim Australians. To give you a brief idea of the wonderful work that Affinity does, they've put together a short uh, video recap of some of their events in uh, the past year, and uh, we'd be pleased to show it to you now. respects to their elders past, present and emerging. To ensure young people are given tangible opportunities to contribute to important conversations happening in society. Over our history we've had many, many Aboriginal graduates this year. We're just about to celebrate our 100th. Since getting to this role in the Human Rights Commission is to look at human rights as an important group blue that brings communities together. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And in that multi-power system, Big powers are vying for more power. As a result, I'm keenly interested in religious liberty, interfaith and intercultural dialogue and law and religion. So I feel a great sense of affinity with affinity. Flying with two wings is the core of the spirituality that Fatou de Guilin brought uh, as he continued to mature uh, and develop as well. And record numbers of journalists throughout the world being imprisoned, killed and taken hostage. But we've never really defined at a union level what, what a journalist is. But where journalism differs from most other professions is, uh, not all, but most, is this other notion of serving the public. What I really believe we're teaching our students are the qualities that they need for leadership in their community, in future professions and in business skills for life. Law schools are now much more than places to train practi practitioners to write wills for local law officers. They're broad educational institutions to train lawyers to do all aspects of work right up till the middle of this century and beyond. It's a privilege for me to help facilitate today's discussion. Fake news, propaganda and politics. They all seem to be jumbled together these days and we don't know what is right and what is wrong and the problem is that the people perpetrating it don't want us to. And so you can't understand equality unless you know what it looks like. And you can't know what it looks like if you're not in dialogue, if you're not talking about it. That inclusivity means a thriving and prosperous society. Morrison, our Prime Minister, is meeting with Trump in the margins of the G20 in Osaka next Saturday. For Australian to respect each other's faith requires knowledge, education, dialogue, and a real commitment to real religious freedom. This is the sort of work that Affinity is committed to. And I'm speaking here not in terms of religion. I'm talking of those things that deeply motivate individuals and cause them to want to emulate the person that they have been listening to. Deep peace being trust at its most basic. People learn to trust aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, right? And to recognize the commonalities in the human community. The harm on the environment is, is a, at an alarming rate. And we've just seen the bushfires and a lot of people have been talking, linking that to climate change. People working together has people feeling, you know, it, you just draw hope from it. You can reach a bigger audience through a metaphor, which is this tiny little poem of documentary, than I did with the feature film. An area always was, always will be Indigenous land, but it's an area that always has been an area of great learning and education. I truly believe that both seek a strong bottom line and hope to contribute to the well-being of society by aiming to solve three major social problems disunity, poverty and ignorance. And uh, today we continue in that, uh, that tradition. I'd like to uh, now introduce you today's facilitator, Associate Professor Clive Pearson. 
Um, Clive is an adjunct research fellow at the Public and Contextual Centre at Charles Sturt University. He's the editor of the International Journal of Public Theology. He's recently published chapters on climate change and theology of cities, featuring Sydney and Western Sydney, and doing theology in the Anthropocene age. He has initiated and facilitated a program on scriptural reasoning featuring Muslim and Christian scholars. And just for those of you who think, oh, you know, how does religion work with the whole climate change thing? Well, a lot of people trace their foundations back to their religious traditions. You only have to look at a new book uh, recently published by secular historian Tom Holland, who basically is presenting an argument as to why the West needs to take seriously its origins in arguments that took place in arcane Christian theological circles seven or eight hundred years ago to find out how our culture is influenced by the principles on which we grow up. And I think that's true for every religious tradition. Today, that's been brought into focus, of course, for all of us in a very practical sense by, um, by the, uh, the fire season we've, we've recently gone through. So it's therefore very appropriate that um, Clive is here to introduce today today's topic and our guest. Please join me in welcoming Clive to the lectern. Thank you. 